Yo, what's going on E7 fam? Pat here, back with another how to play video. And in this one, we'll be talking about one of the breakout stars of the Epic 7 2023 World Championship, the lovely lady herself, Lone Crescent Bologna. As with all of the how to play guides that are here on the channel, you could expect things like stats and skill breakdowns, as well as two or three, or in this case, even four possible end game equipment builds for you to try out. And as always, there's some matchup knowledge there at the end, if that's your thing. Without wasting too much more time, let's just jump right into it and talk about Lone Crescent Bologna's stats. Lone Crescent Bologna is a Dark Warrior of the Scorpio Zodiac symbol. She shares a stat line with Arunka and the collab hero, Rem. Looking at her stats, she has 1,208 attack, 616 defense, 6,488 health, 102 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, no starting effect disc or starting effect resistance. This translates to high attack and slightly above average health for a warrior with average defense. The only stat you can really falter on for a damage dealer is her low speed at 102. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, in the English dub of Epic 7, Lone Crest of Bologna, as well as all versions of Bologna, is voiced by the wonderful Frida Wolf, who we've talked about several times here on the channel. She is also the voice of all versions of Aether and all versions of Robbie. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Lone Crest and Bologna, as well as all versions of Bologna, are voiced by the legendary Kawasumi Ayako, who is the face of the Fate franchise, the servant Artoria Pendragon, and all of her various counterparts. Basically, the woman famous for screaming. Although my personal favorite role of hers is as Moful from the criminally underwatched and underrated Amagi Brilliant Park. I'll wrap things up momentarily. Lone Crescent Bologna's skill 1 is Delicate Crescent. You acquire 20 Fighting Spirit upon use. It has a 0.9x attack multiplier. After use, Lone Crescent Bologna gains immunity for one turn. A successful attack on this skill, along with every other skill that we'll talk about in this section, will always result in a critical hit. That means that, assuming that an opponent doesn't dodge your skills... Lone Crescent Bologna will always land a critical hit on any move, again, that we talk about in this section. Huh. The audacity of these scoundrels. Delicate Crescent is very reminiscent of the skill Judgment on Little Queen Charlotte. Granted, that has a 1.2x attack multiplier as opposed to the 0.9x on Lone Crescent Bologna, but it does have that one turn immunity after use, and that's fairly big for a character like Little Queen Charlotte, and it's still very good even here on Lone Crescent Bologna. Having the ability to essentially perpetually gain immunity should you decide to keep using the skill 1 and forego the skill 3 is very powerful. In a matchup against a character like Senya, who has a blind and a provoke, you can essentially keep them off of locking down your Lone Crescent Bologna, again, assuming you decide to forego the S3, and it is something that I highly recommend in those matchups. As for the lower than average multiplier on this skill, we can give it a pass when we take a look at Lone Crescent Bologna's S2 passive skill, Waxing Crescent. After attacking, increases the attack of Lone Crescent Bologna by 10%. This effect can stack up to 5 times. When an ally is attacked, gains 15 Fighting Spirit, and when Fighting Spirit is full, consumes all Fighting Spirit to activate All Eyes on Me. All Eyes on Me is an AoE attack with a 0.6x attack multiplier. After use, it increases the combat radius of Lone Crescent Bologna by 20%. On top of the damage, the lack of survivability attached to this passive should let you know that this is a turn 2 slash standard gamer's character for PvP. If you can protect her until she gets 5 stacks on Wax and Crescent, she will be able to hard carry the team. Again, her damage will be significantly higher than the multipliers actually suggest on this move. As for All Eyes on Me, I think the most obvious comparison for this move is going to be Seaside Bologna's You're Not Cute. You're Not Cute has a higher base multiplier at 0.7x as well as the defense break, but this one gives you more turn cycling. And when you factor in Wax and Crescent, it will also hit significantly harder after three or so attacks on the character than a character like Seaside Bologna. The other thing to note is that Wax and Crescent takes about 7 attacks on your team in order to fire off the all eyes on me, as opposed to Seaside Bologna's 5 needed for You're Not Cute. So while the rate of all eyes on me is lower than You're Not Cute, overall it will still deal out significantly more damage over the course of a game 
Again, assuming you can keep Lone Crescent Bologna protected. Lone Crescent Bologna's S3 is Quixotic Crescent. You acquire 30 Fighting Spirit upon use, as well as 3 Souls. It has a 4 turn cooldown. It is a single target attack with a 1.5x attack multiplier. Additionally, the damage on this move is increased by 30% if Lone Crescent Bologna has 1 or more buffs on her. After use, Lone Crescent Bologna gains the Vigor buff for 2 turns. Unless Quixotic Crescent secures a kill, in which case... The entire team is granted Vigor buff for two turns. Rude, ignorant, immoral. These words are too good for you. I'll wrap things up momentarily. Despite its lower than average multiplier, Quixotic Crescent is still an absurdly powerful single target S3. The fact that you get an attack increase from the S2 Waxing Crescent basically makes the lower than average multiplier irrelevant. The fact that this character is commonly played with an attack buffer considering it's a standard or turn 2 character means it's going to hit pretty hard. And on top of that, you get a 30% damage amp to the skill if you actually have a buff on the character, which you probably should if you're going to decide to fire this move off. This move can do very easily upwards of 20,000 damage to a single target. And the best ones, when properly supported, fully stacked with an attack buff, they can do somewhere close to, if not exceeding, 30,000 damage. That's enough to kill most of the characters in the game in one hit. So again, when deployed properly, Quixotic Crescent is an absurdly powerful single target S3. And on top of that, it gets even stronger because you will gain access to the Vigor buff after use, which gives you not only more damage for subsequent uses, but you will also get some defense on a character that has no other innate survivability. Getting Vigor for your whole team, if you secure a kill, well, that's just icing on the cake. Anyone who's paid attention to competitive Epic 7 over the last two years knows how powerful the Vigor buff is from a character like Conquer Aloy. So you will get that if you secure a kill. And again, set up properly, it's most likely going to secure a kill. And you'll be able to secure a lot of kills when we talk about Lone Crescent Bologna's Soul Burn, which for the cost of 10 souls, decreases the skill cooldown of Quixotic Crescent by two turns. That basically means that you can use this move every other turn if you so choose, which again, is pretty strong. Having a 20 to 30k damage nuke every other turn is nothing to scoff at. When it comes to Mulligora priorities, since Lone Crescent Bologna is a hyper carry with no utility in the kit, it should be obvious, the character is a damage dealer first and foremost, and you want her to do as much damage as possible, which means that you should have this character at plus 15, no exceptions. Since her release, Lone Crescent Bologna has been one of the most requested characters for these How to Play videos. I must admit though, I'm not exactly an expert on the character. I've had some success with her, but there are definitely players out there who are way better with her than I am. After talking to a couple other content creators and friends that I trust, they suggested that I consult one of two players, as these two are considered to be the strongest Lone Crescent Bologna players on ladder. The first of which, who I was unable to get in contact with, is Winter Wish. If you've been living under a rock, Winter Wish is the player who had insane success with Lone Crescent Bologna during the 2023 World Championship. The other player, who is equally skilled with Lone Crescent Bologna, is Coven, who is a legend level player, again, very famous for Lone Crescent Bologna. I managed to message Coven, and he was kind enough to respond to me and give me some pointers on how to hopefully teach you the best way to play Lone Crescent Bologna. The first build that I'm going to talk about in this video is his suggestion for newer players. He feels that a destruction set build for Lone Crescent Bologna is the strongest, and it's probably also the easiest one for most players to gear. Taking a look around and doing some more research, it appears Winter Wish also is on a similar build. So when we take a look at our primary sets here for the build that both of these players prefer, they are on a destruction set with penetration as the offset. For other offsets that you could choose if you can't farm Katie's, you could pick something like Critical Hit Chance. Health or Defense will help you with the bulk stats. And then Immunity is kind of like, I guess, another option, but considering the skill 1 gives immunity, it's not super amazing. 
Taking a look at the desired stats, I have 3,500 attack here, which is slightly above where Coven's at, but below where Winterwish is at. It's about the average looking around at other Lone Crescent Bolognas. If your attack is lower towards around 3,300, then you're going to need to compensate with more critical hit damage. And then obviously, if you have much higher attack, then you don't need as much critical hit damage as I'm going to show you in this build. It's a balancing act. Lower attack demands higher critical hit damage. Higher attack needs less critical hit damage as a result. Looking at the defense and health, I have 1519k as the spread. This seems to be the average looking around the internet for where Lone Crescent Bologna is at. You could go like 1400 defense at like 20k HP. The low end for defense is about 1400. The low end for health is about 17.5k, where the high ends are around 16 to 1650 for defense, with about 21.5, very, very close to 22k HP for the high end. For speed, I have 160. The average looking around is 170, but I didn't want to overload players too much with really high scores because the average gear score for most Bolognas looking around the internet is a lot higher than many other characters in the game. Not quite as demanding as a character like Arya, but this is still a pretty uh, demanding character in terms of what you need on her. You need very high HP, very high defense, very high attack. You'll see that when we talk about right side gear and per piece average. Critical hit chance is 15% because as you know from the skill section all of our skills always critically strike so there's no reason to build critical hit chance on the character critical hit damage is 300 percent which is largely propped up by the destruction bell effectiveness is zero because we're not a debuffer effect resistance is zero percent in this build however the fourth thing that we'll talk about in this video the fourth build is if you want to modify the first second or third builds we talk about in this video with some effect resistance so again we'll talk about that in the fourth build in the video Taking a look at our right side gear here, I am on a critical hit damage necklace because there's not really anything else to choose here. Normally, you would choose a critical hit chance necklace on destruction set, but since Lone Crest on Polona always critically strikes, it's best to just take the critical hit damage as it gives you the most amount of stats for the piece. For ring, I have health percentage, but it is interchangeable with attack percentage. The per piece average lends itself a bit better to a health percentage ring, but the math can work for you with an attack percentage ring as well. Boots are speed because, as always, we want to take turns in a timely fashion. Artifact is Sigurd Sight. This is pretty much the only really good option, I feel like, on this character. At least on Destruction, you could potentially seek out the Lifesteal build, which we'll talk about later in the build, with a different damaging artifact if you so choose. But Lone Crescent Bologna doesn't have any native survivability in the kit which means that we are relying on the lifesteal from Sigurd Scythe, which she gets low on health, to keep us in the game. You could, I guess, use Golden Rose here, but because Lone Crest Opponent is an attack scaler, Sigurd Scythe will perform significantly better for the character, and it is definitely the artifact I recommend that every single player play on this character. If you don't have a Sigurd Scythe or you have one and it's on another character, it might not be the best option to try to build Lone Crest Opponent, and again, if you are dead set on building her, though, Consider the lifesteal build that we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. Look at the per piece average. You'll see it is a whopping 25% attack per piece average. If you decide to use an attack percentage ring, remember flat stats on that ring will help make the per piece average go a bit lower. 19% defense, 15% HP. Again, flat HP will bring the per piece average down, so don't ignore it. And you'll see in the last slot, I have speed or critical hit damage. Whichever one you can get here, you'll see that we have three speed per piece average and 4% critical hit damage as our per piece average. So you might go six speed on one piece, which is double the per piece average, which means that the next piece can have 8% critical hit damage and so on and so forth. Our second build to talk about is a counter set build for Lone Crescent Bologna. This is basically for players that are trying to stack up Waxing Crescent faster. It kind of has a bit faster ramp up time than the destruction build destruction is a build that is primarily for the hyper late game if you're playing standard or tank down that build will be significantly stronger on the character the longer the game goes on but for those of you that are trying to get a Bologna that has some effectiveness off the line faster even if it is a bit rng uh intense you can definitely try this counter build which has very similar stats and very similar offsets to the previous build 
primary stats are counter penetration. Penetration is obviously giving you the most amount of damage. All stats are critical hit chance, health, defense, like last time. Don't really recommend immunity, but it is here as an option if you so choose. Taking a look at our desired stats, you'll notice that it is actually very similar to the destruction build, although it is a bit lower in other areas. For the attack, I have 3,200. Uh, as compared to the 33 to like 37, uh, maybe in 4K variant of the previous build. The high end on counter seems to be around like 3,500. Again, we don't get a bunch of free stats on the counter set. So it's not like we can make up for the 60 critical hit damage that's missing. So we just kind of have to accept the fact that if we're going counter, we're going to have less stats. We're not going to be as strong in the late game. But again, it's here largely so that that way we can get a lucky counter here or there to pick up some extra stacks on Wax and Crescent early. Defense and health are exactly the same as the previous build at 1519k. Speed exactly the same again at 160. I think being on counter set, you can get away with being even slower than this at like 150 or even 140. If you decide you really, really want to juice the stats on this character, I leave that to you. Critical hit chance is obviously base because, again, we always critically strike. And critical hit damage is 280%. Taking a look at our right side here, I'm on a crit damage necklace for the same reasons as last time because there's not really any other choice in the slot that gives as much stats, uh, at least in terms of the actual math. Ring is health percentage, although, again, you could choose attack percentage. Whichever one you choose, again, flat stats is super important on these things to help round out the per piece average if you need it. Boots is going to be speed. As always, we need to take turns in a timely fashion. If you want to forego speed boots for more stats, take a look at the blueprint in the fourth build when we talk about effect resistance. That is a build that isn't really using any speed and is trying to leverage either attack percentage or health percentage boots to get the most out of the character. You can basically Frankenstein that fourth build to get something that will actually work for you if you decide you want to go for a very tanky or very hard-hitting Lone Crescent Bologna. Artifact, again, is Sacred Scythe. It's really the only good option on this character if you're choosing not to play Lifesteal. Look at the per piece average. I am on 20% attack, 15% defense, 15% health, and again, you can see either speed or critical hit damage in the last spot. Let's waste no time and jump into our third build, which is the Lifesteal build. You'll notice right away that the desired stats on this are higher than the previous build in some areas and less in others. The average Lone Crest and Bologna for Lifesteal seems to be on higher quality gear overall than the average counter one. I think that's because you need to have more damage on the character to make the Lifesteal set work because you're most likely electing to not play the character on Sigurd Scythe, whether that's because you just don't have one or you just don't have an extra copy and a more pressing character needs access to it. Taking a look at our desired stats, 3,400 attack, but I highly recommend you go higher than this if you can do so. You really, really want to make sure that you hit very hard on Lifesteal to actually make it so that the Lifesteal set is worth it. If you're not going to hit hard, you're going to hit like a wet noodle, then I think it's just going to end up being a flop and not really super beneficial for you. Defense is 1,400 and 18K. This is slightly less bulk than what we are used to, and that's because the recommended artifact on this is going to be Draco Plate, which does give you some damage reduction against critical hit damage. So that's kind of why we decided to drop that in order to boost up our attack ever so slightly and our speed ever so slightly again so we can really make that lifesteal set pop make it really work for us speed is 170 which is again the average if you can't get this you could go 160 but i think having the extra damage from destruction set and the innate counter uh, chance on counter set make those a bit better choices for slower balonas i think that lifesteal wants to be at 170 or faster if at all possible Critical hit damage is 280%, which is the same as the counter build. Looking at the right side, necklace is still critical hit damage. Ring on this one is attack percentage because we want to make sure that we get, again, the attack a bit higher. We're really prioritizing the attack and the critical hit damage on this build as opposed to the bulk stats. Uh, you could, again, still go for health percentage of the ring if you so choose. Boots are speed. Artifact here, Draco Plate, as we just talked about. It gives us not only bonus damage to really synergize with the lifesteal set, but gives us damage reduction as well. Sigurd Scythe is something you could still play on Lifesteal set to really double up on that, so that, that way when you get a bat back on your S2, you will absolutely heal up to full, so that's definitely something you can consider as well. Although, again, I do think if you have Sigurd Scythe, choosing either Destruction or Counter might be a bit better for you. 
Looking at the per piece average, it's 11% attack, 15% defense, 20% health, and then the last slot is going to be either speed or critical hit damage based on what you have access to. The last build that we're going to talk about in this video is a resist build for Lone Crest and Bologna. This is essentially you sacrificing all of the speed on the character in order to have some level of effect resistance so you can dodge things like Mediator Coeric S2s or potentially something like an Unbound Knight Arwell S3 as stuns are kind of one of the biggest weaknesses of this character. Looking at our primary sets, you can play this version of the character on any of the three sets that we've talked about in the previous sections. So Counter, Destruction, Lifesteal, those are all fair game. Just obviously the main set is going to be Resist as an offset. You can choose other ones that we've talked about for previous builds if you decide to actually forsake the resistance on this build. I know that sounds a bit weird because this is the resist build, but essentially what the resist version of Lone Crescent Bologna looks like is giving up your speed boots for more stats. In this case, we are essentially trading our ring for effect resistance and what would normally be on our ring slot, which is either health or attack percentage, that's being moved to the boots and we're just playing the character at base speed. If you don't want ER, then obviously you could just keep your old ring, say for example, attack percentage, and choose boots that are on health percentage or even defense percentage in order to make the character base speed and have just insanely high stats elsewhere across the board. Because at the end of the day, Lone Crest and Bologna is a gear score character. The higher the equipment score on all of your gear, the better the character is going to function. Taking a look at our desired stats, I have 3400 attack. Defense is 1,500 and health is 18K. These are a little bit lower than some of the other builds because we obviously have to prop up the effect resistance to a level where it's actually super useful. If you don't want to play ER in this build, you could obviously you know, juice up the attack, health, and defense here. Speed is base at 102 because, again, the entire purpose of this build is to forsake all of your speed in exchange for stats elsewhere. Critical hit chance is obviously still base. Critical hit damage is 250%. Quite a dive here. Again, it's because we're trying to prop up the effect resistance. You could take this to like 300% if you so choose, if you don't want to play any ER. Uh, effectiveness is still zero. ER is 130%. If you decide to go a bit higher to 140 or 150, I don't fault you. But uh, ER as a stat, uh, right now as of recording this video, not exactly the greatest. Uh, again, though, if you wanted to have some ER on the character... About 130%, I think, is the floor for the character. Taking a look at the right side gear, I'm on a critical hit damage necklace for all the same reasons as the three previous builds. Ring is ER, as we already talked about, because that's what we're trying to do here. If you don't want to play ER and you're deciding to forsake all of the effect resistance on the build, then go for a health or an attack percentage ring, like in previous builds. Boots are going to be whichever one you decide you want the most based on the subs, either attack percentage health or defense to make the math work for this one i'm on attack percentage artifact is sigurd scythe or draco plate depending on what you chose for the primary sets as for per piece average 13 percent attack 19 percent defense 21 percent health nine percent effect resistance or some other stat like critical hit damage as always let's round out the video with some matchup knowledge Lone Crest of Bologna is a hyper carry DPS that doesn't have a lot of utility and her only survivability baked into the kit is the Vigor buff on her S3 Quixotic Crescent, which means that she really needs mitigation knights in order to ensure she stays alive and supports to keep pesky debuffs off of her. Unbound Knight Arwell just gives you the most amount of mitigation for a knight, at least currently as of the recording of this video. Also has a super useful stun. Mediator has barriers, cleanses, and even a attack down built into his kit, which again can help provide some longevity to your Lone Crest and Bologna. If you're worried about debuffs, Tywin is an excellent tank to choose, particularly in the face of things like stuns. Stunning Lone Crest of Bologna is something a lot of enemies like to do on ladder in order to ensure that she can't do her job and can't carry a game. Tywin guarantees that she can't be stunned, and Destina is just... Again, a universally great cleanser that just happens to have a revive in her kit. Other characters you could consider are Last Rider Crow, who has fairly good matchups versus a lot of the things that you're already bringing Lone Crest and Bologna into. And then Rowana is really, really good, again, in those same scenarios. A lot of characters that people are commonly using versus Lone Crest and Bologna have things like counters in the kit or a lot of extra attacks. 
Moving on to bad matchups, let's talk about the Knights first. Unbound Knight Arwell has a targeted stun on her skill 3, which is particularly bad for Lone Crest and Bologna. She's not exactly a fast unit, and she relies on the combat readiness push on All Eyes on Me in order to actually take turns. If you're stunned, you can't activate that passive, so that's particularly bad. Last Rider Crow is another one that's not super great, as he basically gives a barrier to his team every time you use an AoE attack. And since you don't have control over the S2 passive, Proking and using all eyes on me, that's going to basically supercharge his S3, mobile weapon Siegfried, in a hurry, and he could essentially just run over your entire team. Characters like Savior Auden and Little Queen Charlotte are also not particularly great matchups, as these are characters with huge single target burst against dark units, which Lone Crest and Polona is one of. Both of these characters have a very high likelihood of killing your LCB in one shot if she is not properly protected. And then you have characters like Lionheart Sermia and Rowana. Both of these characters really prey upon characters with guaranteed extra attacks in the kit, of which Lone Crescent Bologna is one of. As for good matchups, Lone Crescent Bologna is very, very strong versus characters with critical hit resistance somewhere in the kit. So when you see characters like Shu or Senya, Navy Captain Landy, or even Dian, it's a pretty good time to consider taking Lone Crescent Bologna. She's also fairly good against characters that have a lot of AoE counters like Bellion. Navy Captain Landy also falls into that same category. And even though she's not designed for it, I still think Lone Crest Sablona also has a fairly good matchup into very squishy stealth units such as Spectre Tenebria or even a character like Green Landy. Depending on your team composition, if you pair with somebody like, say, Last Rider Crow and his mobile weapon Siegfried, a follow-up all eyes on me can absolutely take these characters out of the fight. She wouldn't be my first choice against them, but she does have a fairly solid matchup against them overall. And that's going to do it for how to play Lone Crest and Bologna. Once again, I want to give a massive shout out to Coven for his help with this video, specifically the character builds and matchup knowledge sections. If I missed anything, as always, you can let me know down in the comments below. If you want to see more how to play guides in the same style, feel free to check out the playlist that's on your screen now. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye now.